Um, so I saw the Fed center on the slides, um, but I will I will put them up here and share my screen. There. I will also add the link to the slides momentarily to this. Okay. Chat. All right. Um, so can you see that? Does that work? Yep. Okay. Great. <clears throat> so uh, this is actually I, I should actually have Michael Strauss up there. Michael. Uh, so yep, I'm here. He he would join in and um, provide the SAC field of view, uh, SAC info from the uh, white papers. So we received 46 white papers total. 20 were on the white festi, um, the all or all sky. 10 of which were particularly about the cadence. Um, four pertain to deep drilling fields. About 26 were related to mini surveys and three relate to TO target of opportunities. So you can notice that those totals are more than 46. That's kind of because some white papers fall into more than one of those categories. Mm -hmm. So of course this question was, how should LSSD survey this guy? Um, every night for 10 years, we're looking at about two and a half million visits and we have the requirement to publish mm -hmm. the expected observations one to two hours ahead. Um, we have uh, to schedule observations during bright time, dark time, and all kinds of conditions. And we want to maximize the efficiency of the telescope um, and don't do everything, anything obviously wrong, but we also want to optimize science and that's where we need the community help. So the timeline for the survey strategy, last July we issued the call, November was when the white papers were received. The submitted white papers are available on that link that is uh, listed there at lssd.org. And they, in uh, this, just this last week, the LSST Science Advisory Council had a meeting to review the white papers. In April, they'll have their final, uh, well, they'll have their, their official recommendations for OPSIM investigations. And then at the end of 2020, or early 2020, sorry, the project will have run those, those, kind, those investigations and deliver a set of simulations to the Survey Cadence Optimization Committee, the SCOC. So this is, uh, we're, we're not going to do a single simulation, we're going to deliver a family of simulations with a variety of analyses. In early 2021, the SCOC will send their recommendations back to the LSST Operations Director. Uh, Mid-2021, the project will Develop, deliver a baseline simulation of that initial survey strategy, um, and then obviously late 2022 operations start. The uh, other thing to note is that the COSEP, that's the Community Observing Strategy Evaluation Paper, what used to be called the Observing Strategy White Paper, but has been renamed for obvious reasons, uh, is ongoing. And so that's a place you can, it's a live document, you can always write up a science case and a metric um, way to evaluate OPSIM runs and, and put it into the COSEP. So out of those 46 white papers, there were seven requests to vary the white fast deep footprint, either further north, so th this was primarily motivated by gaining a lower extinction footprint, or into the galactic plane to study galactic variability, um, stellar variability or galactic structure, various things there, sorry. Um, there were about 10 requests for different cadences of visits in the white fast deep. These sort of primarily focused on things like um, don't have longer visit gaps between particular filters, uh, some specifications on rolling cadence, um, particular aspects of that. It, there were some talking about what filters to use for pairs of visits or for triplets of visits. and um, so, so these were the papers on cadence. And then there were three requests that related, it relate to white fast deep in that they were all sky footprint mini surveys. So there was a white paper on doing high air mass visits for doing uh, differential chromatic refraction for AGN, um, a series of short five second visits over the whole sky or um, trailed one to 15 second exposures um, doing sub-second variability. Um, the, the other white papers, we had three target of opportunity programs. 
three related to co-observing with Euclid or W first, and four white papers on the current or standard deep drilling fields. Um, then we had 11 mini survey suggestions where they were talking about following specific targets for a limited intense period of time. Um, one on the North Ecliptic Spur and two on just general northern coverage. So again, an interest in, in pushing some of the survey footprint further north. And then we had six papers on the galactic plane coverage, including one that was galactic plane as well, so as pole. Then as far as that, we had specifically asked about the visit exposure times and, and, and the question of whether people preferred snaps or visits. Um, many people preferred one's 30 second snaps. This is because you get more efficient survey um, operation. But some still prefer two by 15 second snaps, sometimes in a limited area only. And this is primarily driven by things like white dwarf transits or studying rapid variability. Yeah, we had one request for 22 second or 28 second snaps. One for mini survey for five second visits. Sorry, excuse me. I had to bring a small child to the office. Um, we had one mini survey that was looking for these trailed images. It's kind of interesting. So the the upshot from this is that we had um, a series of families of simulations. So the overall amount of time requested was between 115 to 250 percent of the time we have available. And so this is uh, one of the white papers introduced this LinSim tool. Um, you can find this at the uh, GitHub repository linked there. Um, it's an unfortunate name. You can blame Phil Marshall. The idea is it distributes the number of visits over over uh, an area that you can specify. And so you can sort of see if I have about this many visits to play with, which we kind of come down to certain ranges of numbers that we see we can get out of simulations, that you can distribute those over the sky and how you, how you can distribute them over the sky. So the, the previous baseline gave you something that looked like what's on the bottom of the screen here. Um, but if we just took the white papers that we received and sort of put them together into very general families, um, a, a preliminary assessment might give you these kind of new footprints. Um, so this might be two families that we would start to investigate. So this is taking 95% of the visits out of a simulation that had snaps. And we can just, the, the difference between the, the footprint on the left and the footprint on the right is that the, on the left, the white fast deep only extends up to plus two degrees, and on the right, it extends up to plus 12. The motivation for going higher on the right would be to move more of the visits to this low extinction region. Um, and and so, so these are some sort of generic families. We would like to sort of uh, do some simulations with these early on and, and so that we can sort of see what the community thinks. The idea is, of course, this is going to be a process with the community and, and uh, try and be as transparent as possible. All the off-sim runs from here on out will be done with the new feature-based scheduler. Um, and this runs faster than the old scheduler and it's more flexible so we can configure it in more ways. Um, math will keep the previous metrics plus adopt new metrics from the white papers in COSAM. So in terms of the families of simulations, the SRD requirements must be met. So this means we do have to have 825 visits over about 18,000 square degrees. Um, from the project, we, because of the, the difference between snaps and no snaps on data management requirements. We, we will do simulations with snaps and without snaps. Um, and then from there, we'll do variations on the footprint. So we'll add and remove components, vary the wide, fast, deep. We'll do variations on the cadence within the footprint. Um, so effectively, like long-term rolling cadence or internet cadence. We'll do variations on the deep drilling fields. And like I said, we're, we're really, um, trying to keep transparency in the process, this process. So intermediate stages of optimum experiments can be released, but they should be understood as very preliminary and they're not final. Um, and again, the, the COSEP is a great place to provide additional feedback 
uh, in terms of metrics and performance evaluations. So this is just the timeline up again, um, and I will leave it with that. So any questions you can now ask to me and Michael. Um, why, why don't we just take a pause and see if people do have questions. I have a, a number of things to add uh, and embellish on, on some of the things Lynn said, but let's let's see what uh, people might have in questions or comments at this point. And if you cannot speak, you can send your questions on the chat and I will ask them on your behalf. Anybody has questions? Lynn, you probably mentioned this, but I missed it. What fraction of the wide, fast, deep white papers suggested a rolling cadence of some sort? Most um, of them, I think. Well, there, there were certainly wide, fast, deep papers, um, which, well, I, I think they all had some kind of specification in general, but it might not have been strictly rolling cadence. Like, for example, one of the things that the desk asked for was no um, visit gaps longer than 15 days in the, in the same filter. Um, that's hard to do without some kind of rolling cadence, but they didn't specify a rolling cadence to use. Yeah, I think uh, I think very few of the of the white papers that really were asking for substantial amounts of things were specifically arguing against a rolling cadence. If that makes any sense. Yeah. So my question was the inverse. What fraction of papers came up with advocating a particular rolling cadence? Uh, a fair, a fair number of them. Um, okay, that's I, good. Yeah, that's I good. mean, yeah. Of course, everyone interprets rolling cadence a little differently, which yeah. is fine. Which is, which is really to say that uh, we're going to have to do a variety of experiments, and and uh, the the opsim will will do a variety of different things, and we'll see how they work, um, rather than just going exactly with what what it, what any given uh, white paper might have int uh, interpreted rolling cadence to be. Hi, it's Phil here, Lynn. Um, yep. uh, yeah, go ahead, Phil. So, um, uh, really interesting to see what people submitted and also um, get an idea of what you're thinking of um, simulating. So, you're, it looked like there was a, half a dozen different things to vary. So it, that could lead to a very large multi-dimensional grid of simulations. H how many simulations are you thinking of doing? Yeah, this is a, uh, Lynn, go ahead and address that and then I, I'll have some comments. Okay. Um, so I guess, I guess we, I would start with um, those two different footprints that I showed. Um, and then running them with and without snaps, and that kind of gives you different distributions of visits. Um, and I think that, that that's sort of where we're planning to start and then have those come out. And then from there, we'll start tackling the question of like, okay, how do we add rolling cadence um, for this footprint? So when you say how many simulations will run, by the end, I imagine there'll be quite a lot. But be, because, hundreds. yeah, because of the fact that, you know, the first thing that we run will not um, be what we want to actually do. So in those terms, there's, there's a lot. Uh, in terms of like how many we might actually deliver to the SCOC at the end, um, that's a good question, and I don't, I don't know if I have a great answer. I think in some ways that'll depend a little bit on how uh, things how things go on the way. Lynn, would you agree with the following promise? We will have between 100 and 1,000 simulations that will belong to about 10 different families. I, I think that's, that's certainly a reasonable um, order of magnitude, sure. So maybe I, I can comment a little bit. Um, the job that the SAC has been given is to, given the the 46 um, white papers that we have and the uh, and our assessment of them, to come up with a a series of specific recommendations that will address exactly 
uh, Phil's question. That is, what is the range of simulations to be done? Um, as we were just talking about the um, this question of rolling cadence, it, any given white paper will make specific uh, uh, and sometimes more or less focused recommendations on, on what um, kind of cadence or sky coverage they would like. But um, I think the synthesis that that um, the SAC is working on is is trying to figure out what is the range of different simulations that will cover uh, the range of scientific questions that we think are, are addressable. One of the um, challenges here is first, as you said, as I said, the, the space of possible simulations to, to run is quite large. And as I understand it, and, and uh, we had a lot of discussion about this at our SAC meeting, um, the rate limiting step is not necessarily just computer time to run n number of simulations, but rather the time to, for any given sort of crude understanding of what the simulation should do, uh, to, trying to tweak the parameters to come up with something sensible. Uh, Lynn was showing her LinSim outputs that's, that say, um, you know, given the total, total amount of time available, here's a way to combine the different fields uh, and the different numbers of exposures to, to, um, so that uh, you're not asking for 150 percent of the available time. And that will be very useful in sort of trying to figure that all out. Um, but but that is that is certainly one of the one of the key things to go. I see a few hands up, so let me stop. But I have a, a number of other things I can I can say. John, are you raising your hand? Yeah. So could you talk about what the existing like say pre white paper uh, baseline cadences will they continue to have an existence or you know are we and uh, and continue to be run because you know it seems to me that you know, oftentimes people implicitly assume that things are going to be the way they were, and you know, a few people come up with a good idea, and on the other hand, everyone else is working at, on the basis of the old assumptions. So, could you talk about the role uh, that those have and those footprints and so forth and so on? Um, from the SACS point of view, yes. I mean, there exists. Uh, I don't. Default is is not the right word, but uh, but there does exist a baseline which has uh, allowed us to focus our thinking at some level. So, and as the Optim has evolved, the details of what that actually looks like in practice have, have evolved so well. Um, so, so yes, I think, I think uh, those will, will go, continue to go forward. Uh, uh, various other things um, that, that are, that have been suggested. Um, so, one of the, so one of the lim rate limiting steps in, in, in my understanding, and Lynn, Lynn and Jelka will correct me if I'm wrong, is for any given vague understanding of, oh, let's do rolling cadence this way versus that way, making that actually work in practice requires some real human thought. And, and that's, that's a challenge. Um, and, the, and, an, and then, of course, the computer time to actually run the simulations is, will take time. But the other rate limiting step is that once one has those simulations in hand, then you actually have to compare them. And that's what the metrics are for, but not all metrics that we would love to have exist in a, within the math. And that will be, developing those will be another challenge. Um, um, Federica, go ahead. Yeah, I had exactly this question. Lynn, do you, do you have a sense that the people that submit a paper also wrote metrics or wrote enough information for you to write a metric that evaluates a cadence for the science that they aspire to do? Well, everybody who wrote a white paper included something that we can turn into a metric. Um, whether or not that's actually uh, addresses the science that they really wanted to do might be another question. Um, yeah. and, then, and I think yeah. that's some place where we have to probably have a bit more uh, discussion. With, with right, and I think that will be a theme in the um, SAC report. We, we talked quite a lot about this, and there were, there were concerns. Um, a handful of the white papers actually came up, came with real maps. They actually wrote the code. Uh, uh, a modest number wrote, um, wrote things in enough detail that you say, yeah, that's, that captures the essence of it. And others were, were increasingly vague. Um, and and frankly, some of the white papers didn't didn't um, didn't really have. It wasn't clear what the metric would be. That is, um, 
it's you know here's an experiment to try and let's see what happens and it wasn't necessarily captured in a metric but i do see the the development of those those metrics as as a major task for sort of both the project team and and the scientific community as a whole and i imagine that um i suspect uh we'll have uh, further discussions along these lines where we try to um understand well hear more from the white paper authors on on what they actually had in mind and and um see if we can get get some work in in actually developing those metrics um i am a little bit worried that the team that will have all the work of of running these simulations will also have the work of writing the metrics and and it can get right. it can get a little overwhelming so if we think about it well enough and we plan it carefully enough we can involve the science collaborations in the role of the people that would write right. a lot of these metrics and that may be That's also right. something that Jenna and I may want to talk about to see if we can secure some mm -hmm. funds to or workshops or something to make that happen yeah. at some point okay okay um good let me let me think what else I wanted to say um so again we you know the SAC went through all 46 of the, the white papers, um, and and our immediate output is a is a formal report which will be made public that describes what our recommendations for the next round of simulation should be, and that in practice will be an iterative. Uh, as we prepare that, um, we will have to iterate with the project team and and no doubt iterate with some of the um, white paper authors where we said. I think this is what you meant, but or does this get the gist of what you had in mind? Um, there'll, there'll be some of that. And um, um, let me just draw an example. Um, and John, um, I'm think um, I don't I, I don't remember if you were a co-author on this white paper, but there were a, a variety of of um, requests for low galactic latitude science, uh, and one of them was to one of them said, let's just do wide, fast, deep cadence in at, at uh, all latitudes, inclu including uh, low latitudes. And one of the questions that came up is, is that is that exact? Does that that may be better for the for variability science, for example, than what um, than what what the uh, earlier baseline was? But is is wide, fast, deep the right answer? Is there a better answer? Is it can one justify it more than just saying, well, if the high latitude science gets this, uh, should the low latitude science get it? This as well, and another related question that came up is that um, a number of the low galactic latitude white papers uh, focused on the galactic bulge, and one of the questions was what happens to the anti-centric direction, and what's the right thing scientifically to do there? Um, should it just be wide, fast, deep, or are there other ways to think about that as well? Um, so I'll just throw that out as questions that we're finding ourselves that we found ourselves talking about a, a bit and. You know, the white papers covered a lot of scientific themes, but didn't answer every single question we might have asked. And John, I'll put you on the spot I, to see if you. Yeah, have I, I think that it would be. I think it would be very helpful to have mm -hmm. sort of a specific set of questions. You know, asking like what you would like to see the answer. So you know what they are. Yeah. And yes. then uh, we could approach the collaboration. And then you know, if people are you know serious, then this is the time that uh, we could get a real, you know, response uh, figuring these things, right? Now that mm -hmm. it would be clear that it would have a lot of meaning in the response as opposed to being, you know, who knows what will happen, right? It's infinitely right, far right. away and no one knows what right, we right. decided. Uh, in exactly. particular, you know, uh, you know, to me at least, you know, the, because the anti-center was in all the baseline things, I never thought about it very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and now all of you know and now other things are under consideration so you know right, what's, right, right. what's the question well you know i think right. that all the people who want to do star forming regions and open mm -hmm. clusters and this that and the other thing you know those sources are all you know at b less than 20 probably or most of them are yeah. and so right, forth right. and so on but i don't you know you know i don't have, i'm not prepared to give an answer but if you would give us no. a formal request then that would finally give me something that i could uh, push on people for, and I think we would get a very uh, a valuable response to you, and that would be. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I really welcome that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I I didn't expect a, a full cogent answer to, to an ill posed question right away, but but yes, that that makes a lot of sense. And you know, as 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 we're going through that, there was a 
a, a series of questions. And again, um, I'm picking on you, John, as at low galactic latitudes, but there's 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 other issues that that, well, that come I, up. Well, I will um, I will confidently say that my five second paper will be the worst one since I literally wrote it in a hotel room at my wife's conference the day of, <laughs> and every day since then I've thought of things. So you know, it was just to be sure that something was thrown on the fire yeah, that you know yeah, a, yeah. one set of short second exposures might be valuable. The whole thing could happen right. in commissioning over a limited right, area right. of the sky, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to to torn something in. So if it right, looks right. shoddy, it was. No, but, no, uh, no, no, don't. Uh, I'm, then I'm making no statement <laughs> on shoddy, uh, shoddy white papers, but rather that there are additional questions that that have come up, and and we'll find our, ourselves asking yeah, okay. about. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think if there. are other things to say again, our our, our nominal for for getting this report out to the public is April. Um, again, um, we have um, many pages of notes that um, which is the raw material that we're starting to put that report together. And I'm not, I'm not sure there's much more specific to say at this point. Um, Michael, can I ask a question? So, yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if your report is going to include some sort of overall. Um, summary of the impacts on data management of the cadences that are proposed. So, for example, some well, of these are very fast, looking at uh, you know snaps every second, every two seconds, and this would have yes. an impact on our data processing. Right. Um, I mean, our immediate our immediate goal is to get recommendations for opsim runs, um, and um, certainly one of the things that uh, was in the white paper call was an assessment of whether as it were, standard data processing would be enough. And there are some yes. very specialized programs within yes. <laughs> the white paper's calls, and, the ans and they basically say, you know, get the data and we'll, we'll, we'll process it and it won't be, a, it won't be the data management's uh, job. Um, so, um, so that's a partial answer to your question. Most, mm -hmm. I think my, my understanding was that most of the white papers um, we're asking for data that should be straightforward to process. And the most interesting exception is the question that Jelka was asking at the beginning of this meeting, namely the crowded field photometry. So the, let, let me tie to that theme. Um, there were, again, a lot, of, a lot of interesting white papers doing things at low galactic latitudes where the stellar density will be very high. And some of them were, fo were thinking static science questions. Um, and you know, if we're going to devote a significant fraction of LSST time to those data. We 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 collectively should make sure that those data are processed in a meaningful way. And so, so that, I mean that, uh, that, so that certainly questions. addresses so, um, issues of, of different algorithms to to be run. But I'm thinking also yeah. of um, some of the proposals. I think Lynn presented one where there was a two second exposure at very high frequency, and this would have yeah. even if we're still just using the standard algorithms and it doesn't require any change there. It will have a huge impact on our compute resources. Oh, just in total amounts of um, exactly. So yeah, there was both angles here. There's the algorithmic angle, special algorithm, and just uh, data rate exactly. Angle. Yes. Well, and it would so certainly be that. useful to know. Maybe not this very moment, but uh, as it were, when these uh, when final science decisions are made, where those bottlenecks will be. I mean, we, again, we can easily, relatively easily, simulate any one of these scenarios. If they're unrealistic from a, a data point of view, in the sense that you're talking about, um, then that's something that 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 um, will need to need to be input in, in in sort of those final decisions. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Let me say, um, Lynn, can you bring up again the slide with your timeline? Let me just make a point or two sure. there, if I may. Um, so one of the one of one of the things that's mentioned. Is that um, there is a, an organization called the Survey Cadence Optimization Committee that doesn't yet roll off my tongue very easily. This this committee doesn't exist yet. You will notice it's I, it's, I can I can never remember its name um, from one of these meetings to another. And this committee will be set up by the operations director. And as you know, I mean what's happening is that this whole time corresponds to the time when LSST is making the transition from construction to commissioning slash operations. And so there will be, you know, through this time, both there's both a commissioning director, uh, Steve Kahn and Angelko as his deputy, and an operations director. We have an interim operations director now, Bob Blum. And because 
this there's uh, still interesting discussions about whether this SCOC is under uh, under which of these uh, these two um, operations is it the operations or or, or or project that oversees the SCA, SCOC that um, you'll notice that the SCOC delivers the recommendations to the LSST operations director, which again the interim is is Bob Lum, but um, how that will all work and exactly how this all relates to the SAC. There are words in various documents that suggest that this is a subset of the SAC. The SAC is currently a project, uh, is underneath the project exactly what the role of the SAC will be in operations. These are all interesting political discussions, which is closely related to these issues. I don't know, Michelko, if you want to say more on that on that front. No, thank you for inviting me. Did I, did I say it more or less correctly? You said it exactly correctly, or <laughs> no, uh, to be more precise, you said it consistent with what I thought, but it's not obviously correct. <laughs> so, so that's that's um, a, a, a bit of a complication. So, the SCOC will exist by the time that they have to by the, the time they have to start thinking about all these things. Actually, I, I can comment a, a tiny bit more. <clears throat> so, this survey cadence optimization committee, as you say, is a um, advi committee advisory to the operations director. Actually, in, in the operations plan, um, there's a, another group within the operations team whose job it will be to evaluate um, future-looking simulations of the survey, during, during the survey, I mean. And yeah, so, so one thing we've been thinking about is, uh, this is, this is me, as someone within the operations team now, rather than with my collaboration chair hat on, I've jumped out for, for a second. Um, one thing we've been thinking about is, can we get that working group set up early in order to um, help out with the investigation of these simulations that are being made? And I think, going back to Leanne's point, I think one of the things that that team should be doing is looking at the cost to the operating facility of, of any particular simulated cadence in terms of data processing and so on. So I will take that back to, to Bob Blum as, as something um, for us to, to think about, and we could even start figuring out whether we could do something in this first round of simulations. Sounds good, Phil. Any other questions? So I will just uh, add that the um, you know one of, as Lynn made reference to to families of simulations and what you know that will give us a framework we the the SAC a framework in in terms of the recommendations we're going to make um, again exactly what the dimension what what defines the distinction between different families is a different cadence different footprint um, I, I is something that we're still um, thinking about in an, and iterating with um, with Lynn and, and Peter and Jelko and others um, for their for their feedback. Um, so, you know, again, it's very tempting to think of this uh, as a combinatorics problem and simply say, let's take each of the options and think of each of the, that people suggested, explore them in uh, in a variety of dimensions, and quickly we can invent uh, ten to the eighth different simulations that need to be that no one could possibly. Even if we could run them, no one could possibly digest the results. Um, so we're trying to be a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, clever about this. And of course, again, there's there are some rules that say you can't, you can only observe for ten years, and um, and that's some of the things are more scientifically compelling than others. So um, that that will reduce the dimensionality of the problem considerably. But I, I we the SAC have not yet. Um, solve that problem uh, uh, completely by any means, and uh, we'll find ourselves continuing to think about that. Uh, <clears throat> Fred, I had a little little question for Lynn, if it's okay. Um, oh. Lynn, I apologize. In December, I didn't get to the thing that I said I was going to do, which was gather up all the LaTeX files and start working them into the COSAP. I just wondered if, despite my <laughs> failure, you had made any progress on this, and whether there's anything that we as science collaboration chairs can do to help get the LaTeX into the COSAP for all of these white papers. Uh, 
So this is a LaTeX of the 46 white papers you're refer referring to? Yeah, that's right. So in, in the wording of the call, there's, oh, sorry, in the, in the call document, there's wording that's, that talks about um, absorbing the, the white papers that were submitted into the COSAP. And I think this is a good idea, right, to, to have it as a compendium of everything that was submitted, um, if we can. Um, but the technical problem is can, how do we get the LaTeX files and, and then the practical problem is finding the time to put them into the COSAP. I'm just wondering if, if you've made any progress, Lynn. You're muted at the moment. Yeah, sorry. I was having a hard time unmuting while I was sharing my screen. Um, so I, I did ask. Uh, first, I checked it with all the white paper authors if they were okay with making their paper public. And I did ask at the same time if they would send me uh, either the LaTeX or a link to the LaTeX. I believe, um, I haven't checked thoroughly, but I believe that, that we do have LaTeX or a link to their location of the LaTeX for most of the white papers, probably not 100%. Um, so, so for most of them, yeah, we do have it. I have not made any progress in putting it into the actual COSEP. So that certainly is something that still needs to be done. That's great though. I mean, if you, <clears throat> If you could just get them checked in, then I'm sure we could rustle up a band of willing volunteers to help um, help shape them into the V2 code. Yes, sorry, and I can you remind me where the st stage is on that going to? Um, there was an intermediate prep for V2, right, um, of the COSEP, and so I think that we still we still need to do that first stage of, of prepping for it, right, and. I can just, but I can take the, the LaTeX that I have and check it in in some directory there. And, and yes, that sounds like a great place to get started. Yeah, I think any branch would do at this point. We probably do have to merge into master so that we're developing V2 on the master branch. But um, the main thing is to get hold of the files so we can start working with them, I think. And it sounds like you made a lot of progress. Thank you. You're welcome. A lot of people worked on it, on their white papers in Overleaf or something. so. Um, then they sent me links to the overly open. So it was nice. So that actually would, that would make it interesting because we would have a clear separation between the papers that have metrics and the papers that don't, because those were organized in different sessions in the, in the COSA paper. That might be something else to tackle in the COSA. Um, the, the sections that don't have metrics may need to get metrics really basically right if I remember correctly we had sort of every section was split into two parts one that was sort of general ideas and suggestions and one that was actually uh, things that used metrics and that quantified the science throughput uh, with mm -hmm. metrics to you know some better than others of course uh, but there was already an organization into um, you know, things that were ideas up in the air and things that actually had something workable. So by absorbing these papers into the COSEP, you, it, they would automatically fall on one or the other side. Yeah, I mean, all of the white papers did come in with some kind of metric, although for some it was just things like measure how many visits you get in our part of the sky that we're asking for. Yeah. Which, which was reasonable, you know, the, an interesting is, you know, when are the metrics of that flavor and when are the metrics really science? Uh, and sometimes, sometimes the white papers are not science and saying, you know, and we will write this paper as a result of, of this work, um, but are, are in some sense broader than that, that or sometimes more philosophical than that, if that makes any sense. Um, so, so metrics that do say, you know, Get, get this flavor of data and let's find out how much of that, that flavor of data we get um, are, in, are in that sense reasonably justified. Right, and not all sciences are in a stage in which they can tell you what exactly they want to measure and how. But, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's that right. may not be, they may not mean that that science is not worth pursuing. Right, exactly. Okay, any other questions? Thank you so much. This was actually super interesting. Uh, Thank you. Very helpful. And needless to say, um, if there are questions for me 
that come up in afterwards, just drop me a note, give me a call, and I imagine Lynn, you would feel the same way. Definitely. Thank you, Michael and Lynn. And I do encourage the chairs with Michael and Lynn's permission to share the video of the call with the science collaborations. Yeah, I think anybody in the science collaborations that wrote yep. the paper yep. especially should be super interested. Yep. Brilliant. Thank Bye, you everyone. very much. And we'll see you in a month. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.